Let's say a new operating system comes out, such as Windows Server 2022. I want to start testing it. I want to start seeing whether my applications work with it. Or as an instructor, I want to create a sandbox for my students to start experimenting with it. Well, I can do that with Hyper-V. And in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how I install Windows Server 2022 in a Hyper-V environment. Now, this could be any operating system. The fact that in this video I'm using Server 2022, I could be installing a Windows 10 machine to do some specific testing, a Windows 11 machine, a Linux machine. I can go both with a new operating system or maybe go backwards to use an older operating system for application compatibility. But in this video, we're going to take a look at Windows Server 2022. Let's go have a look at installing it in Hyper-V. If we want to install, say, a server or an operating system that's not part of the quick start in Hyper-V, then we're going to use Hyper-V Manager. So I'll open up Hyper-V Manager, and for this demo, I'm assuming that you already have this installed. If not, don't worry, just check out my previous video where I talk about how to install Hyper-V, and I demonstrate how to create a Windows 11 development environment which you can see right here. You'll notice that the old machine that I have, this list of machines here, it's currently off. That's great because that also means it's not consuming any resources off my system except for the storage space being used for this machine. So it's not using processor, it's not using memory, and it's not using network. So if I want to create a new virtual machine, I want to create a virtual machine to test out Windows Server 2022, what I'm going to do is you'll notice that in the Hyper-V Manager, this is the machine that it'll be created on. This will be the list of machines. And then over here, I have actions to work with Hyper-V and I have actions to work with a specific virtual machine. So I'm going to go in and create the action to work with my host machine and I'm going to create a new virtual machine. You'll notice that there's also the quick create option, but I'm going to walk through all of the steps for creating a virtual machine a little more in depth in this video. So I'll go into virtual machines and it's going to open up a wizard. So I'm going to call this new machine Windows uh, Win 2022 test. So I want to do a test of the Windows 2022 server and I don't want to do it on an existing system. I want to run it as a virtual machine to test it out. Now one of the things that I always do is I, I very rarely store the virtual machine on the default location. And the reason for that is for this machine here, that default, lo default location would be the C drive. And I'd, I'm gonna put it on a fast SSD drive, but not on my operating system drive. So I'm gonna go to my, my Z drive, or if you're down in the States, your Z drive. And I'm gonna go, I've created this new empty folder. In fact, let's just re rename it to VM. 2022 and I usually give all of my virtual machines their own folder just so I can find them quickly and we're going to call it VM so we'll select that folder and now that's where the virtual machine will be stored. Now it is important that that drive or that location has sufficient space for the operating system that you're going to put in. Um, so for example this is about a 5 gig download I've already downloaded the ISO but by the time I put some applications and some testing in there, I'm probably going to want to have, you know, 30 to 100 gigs worth of space to play around with it. If it's going to be a production VM, that's a whole other story. It could be any space, uh, depending on what you're installing for applications. So be aware that it does, that, that storage is persistent. So I'll go next, and then you'll notice I have the option of a Generation 1 or a Generation 2. Generation 1 is really for older applications that I might need to run. I would say go Gen 2 unless you have a compelling reason to run older virtual hardware. I'm going to run Gen 2. Okay. And we'll go into next. Now, here's a very important thing. It, it, you know, it talks about the startup memory. It does dynamically allocate memory from the host system as needed. But when it first starts up, I'm actually going to let it start up with eight gigs of memory. I have a fair amount of memory in this particular host machine and um, I have 32 gigs in here. So I'm going to give it eight gigs for this server so that it's not terribly slow. It'll be quite quite good. It will allocate more space as needed. When it comes to networking, I'm going to choose which uh, network I'm going to go through. So I'm going to go to a default switch. That's a virtual switch. And then that's going to connect out to the outside world. I will go in and I can actually either create a brand new virtual hard disk or 
Let's say I've already created a different virtual machine and I want to connect to the hard drive from that virtual machine. You can do it. You can connect into an existing hard drive. You can even go in and, and create the virtual machine definition, but do the hard drive later. In my case, I will need a hard drive. So you'll notice it'll default to that directory and it'll set up to a maximum of 127 gigs. If I have the space, I can make it up to 64 terabytes. I don't have that much hard drive space. So, and I certainly don't need an operating system that runs a 24 terabyte system, but it's available. Uh, the name is fine for me. So I'm gonna go next. And now it's gonna say, okay, are you gonna install the operating system later? Or do you want to install it now? Well, if I want to install it now, I'm going to have to provide the ISO or the disk image file. So it's very important that you actually have this downloaded in advance. In my case, I downloaded it and I did put the folder for it on the desktop here. So I do have the Windows Server 2022 ISO file downloaded. It could be a Linux ISO file. It could be an ISO file that you have as part of your subscription to Microsoft Developer Network or as part of your Microsoft Azure for Education subscription. So now I'm gonna go next. It gives me a summary of what I'm doing. And now it's going to go in, allocate those resources as a virtual machine and start the process of building that virtual machine and it's done well not quite you'll notice that it built the virtual machine now what I need to do is I'm going to actually connect to that virtual machine and then I'm going to start it that's a little bit of a trick you can right click and you'll notice that a lot of the settings here are actually in the context sensitive menu so I'll go here and I'll connect to that virtual machine and when you connect to it it's as if you've opened up this machine, you start the machine and it's going to say, I'm starting and there's an ISO installed in my DVD drive. It doesn't have a DVD drive, but it thinks it does because you've connected the ISO image. So here we go. It's now booting the virtual machine as if it was a fresh brand new computer, but it's inside of your computer. And then it's going to start up with the installation process. Press any key to boot. So I press any key, right? So we go in there. And in this case here, make sure that I got that. Now it's loading the files because I click the key. Sometimes it's a little tricky to make sure that you get that key in time and it's begin the, beginning the installation process. It's just like a regular install. So I'll take the defaults here. I'll do an install. It's recognized that ISO image and it's now going to begin the process of installing Windows Server 2022, just like you would any Windows Server uh, installation. Now it's gonna ask me for the operating system. In this case here, I'm just gonna go next. I don't have a product key and it's gonna put it into trial mode. So I'm gonna choose the data center desktop experience. This is something that a lot of my students struggle with. They'll go data center, but if, if you do data center, it's gonna do server core which means it's command line PowerShell. So desktop experience puts a graphic interface on there, which for most people is what they're going to want when they're first you know, playing around with servers and such. You have to accept the license agreement. You can either upgrade, well, not really upgrading any applications here. And then you can do it in a server operating system only where you choose everything. Um, I'm just gonna go upgrade, but it's not available. You can see that. And so I'll go install now, do the same process again. Have, I don't have a product key, do the data center desktop. In this case here, I'm gonna do the custom experience. So we go through custom experience. Now, when we go to the custom experience, you'll notice that there's unallocated space. It's 127 gigs of space. That's what it sees. Now, what happens is when it allocates that hard drive space, it does so dynamically. So it could be that the drive that I'm installing on doesn't actually have 127 gigs of free space, but as long as the virtual operating system does not exceed what's on that hard drive, the physical hard drive, I'll be okay. So I'll just choose that unallocated space. I can create a new partition on there if I want. So you can go and create new partitions on there. Just cancel that. I'll grab the unallocated space. It'll partition it for me. So it's going to go through and it's going to create all of the installation files, all the directories for me, copy the files in and continue with the installation. As you can see, it reboots after it copies all the files. It takes a little while to copy all those files. And then it goes through the questioning portion of the setup. So it's still not done. You're still going to have to put in things like what do you want your administrator name to be in those types of things. Or if you want to join a domain, all those good things. But it has copied all the files. It created the partition. And now it's going to go through the regular install that you might see. We're going to have to put in an administrator password. And it's really important because if you see my mouse is currently on the outside of the version, 
virtual machine. When I come into the virtual machine, see how it turns into a little dot. You want to make sure that you click in the virtual machine and then you can put in your super secret password. So I'll put it in. You have to repeat it. So the super secret password is in and we will say finish. So now it'll finalize that account. It'll apply the settings and here we go. Now you might say, wait a second, if I hit control alt delete, won't my host system wind up taking that? It will. Let's go ahead. We'll just connect in with that video. So it's just going to go in and make sure that the video resolution is okay. And then I'll show you how to log in. So if we come in here, you can see that I want to put in, well, it, it actually prompts me to log in so I can just log in now. But if I needed to send a control alt delete, there's this action menu. And with the action menu, you'll notice that you can modify what's happening here. So you can go in and you'll notice control alt delete is control alt end. So you can put that in. So in my case, I'll put in my super secret password. And I put it in, it'll set up my user profile as if it was a brand new machine. Cause it is, it's a brand new virtual machine. I'll just close down the action menu and I'll be able to start installing applications. I'll be able to start configuring it and it'll act like a real windows 20. Well, it is a real windows 2022 server, but it's running using the resources of my host system. And I can then delete it when I'm done testing it or I could put these into production. That's a whole other subject area, but you can put them into production, have to accept my network here so that I have network connectivity and it will use the resources of that host system. So I can set it up to use things like the sound and I can have it use the camera. Even there's a lot of different ways we can set that up. I'll maybe do some videos on that comment down below. If you'd want to see any other aspects of virtualization, you'll notice I go right to the server manager, which is what you would expect with a windows server. But for all intents and purposes, I can just start playing with it. That's how you set up a virtual machine in Windows Hyper-V. There we are. We have a nice Windows Server 2022 environment. And that's a very useful tool for teaching and learning and doing all sorts of experimentation. I can now get familiar with the operating system before actually deploying it into an environment. Like I said at the beginning of the video, this does not have to be server 2022. What I demonstrated in this video could be applied to any other operating system. Now that we know how to create virtual machines in Hyper-V, we now need to learn how we can manage those machines. So I'm going to create some more videos on the channel here on managing virtual machines. And this is all part of a larger course that I'm creating for Skillshare. I have a link down below if you're interested in Skillshare. The course isn't quite ready yet. I only have the first few videos done, but we're going to talk about managing virtual machines there. We're going to talk about how we can use Macs in order to virtualize operating systems. I'll talk both about Intel based Macs as well as M1 Macs. A lot of those videos will find their way here to YouTube. So make sure to subscribe and uh, send up, sign up for notifications if you are interested in learning about that here or check out Skillshare. And as soon as the course is available, it'll be available.